In one of our previous videos, we've already taken a look at how the nervous system is kind of divided up. We have the central nervous system with the brain and the spinal cord. Then you have the peripheral nervous system, which is responsible for sensing your environment with all the different types of receptors that you have. And then you have motor neurons that will carry out actions through muscle contraction or through telling different types of organs to secrete different types of hormones to help do things and make them work. So the somatic nervous system is related to muscle contraction. And then you have this very special unit, which we refer to as the autonomic nervous system or the ANS. Autonomic kind of sounds like automatic. So you can think that there's some kind of involuntary action going on here that you don't have to be conscious and thinking about. And it's still actually working to make everything um, function smoothly in your body. So the autonomic nervous system, and this was also in a previous video, this is just to prepare us for the next step here, is split up into the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. And the way we talked about for me how to remember this is the para sounds like parents, so the parasympathetic system tends to calm me down. At least that's what your parents are supposed to do. If that's not the case, then come up with a different analogy. And sympathetic sounds like sin, I guess. So when you end up getting into a fight or something like that, that's something that's not so good, I guess. So we're going to talk about three specific functions in the autonomic nervous system. Um, you can think about the butterflies that you get in your stomach, your heart rate kind of going up, the pupils, your pu pupils dilating or constricting depending on if you're sensing danger or not, the fight or flight response. Uh, a lot of this is part of the sympathetic system. So we're going to talk about three specific functions here, just really briefly so you understand a little bit about why these actions are involuntary. So the autonomic nervous system is part of the peripheral system we've said, and it controls involuntary processes. The part of the brain that's responsible is the medulla oblongata located in the brain stem. So you have to make this association between the autonomic nervous system, involuntary processes, and then the medulla oblongata being the central area that controls all of this. So one of the actions is swallowing. And you probably already know that you can consciously control your swallowing. So when I'm drinking something or I'm eating something, I'm actually deciding when I'm going to swallow. And so that is a voluntary thing that is controlled not by the medulla oblongata, but controlled by the cerebral cortex because it's a conscious and voluntary decision. But once the food starts passing down the esophagus, then it takes over, um, sorry, then the medulla oblongata takes over and then it starts to become involuntary muscle contraction, the wave of peristalsis to bring your food all the way down. Actually, these are lungs. What are we doing there? Okay, down this way. All right, fantastic. Another of the autonomic nervous system processes is breathing. Breathing rate is actually controlled by also the medulla oblongata and it's responding to changes in your blood pH. So there are chemoreceptors. That's one of the five or six different types of receptors you need to understand. Obviously, it has something to do with the chemistry of the actual blood. And so we're looking at basically the concentration of carbon dioxide, because the more carbon dioxide you have flowing through your blood, the lower the pH is going to be, which means you need to get rid of more carbon dioxide. So changes in pH will change the rate and your depth of your actual ventilation, which is the process of breathing, breathing in oxygen and then exhaling carbon dioxide. So that's basically what's happening with breathing. It's a change. It's something that you don't have to think about. Obviously, you can consciously take a deep breath, like when you're doing yoga or meditation, when the doctor says, take a deep breath now, then you have to do that. But when you're not thinking about it, like me right now, if I keep on talking, I have to actually consciously take a breath because I'm not allowing my autonomic nervous system to kind of take over. But for the most part, you're doing most of your breathing unconsciously without really thinking about it. And then finally, your heart rate cardiovascular center in the medulla oblongata also regulates heart rate by sending messages to the pacemaker. So back in topic six, when you're learning about the heart, you learned about how the pacemaker actually controls the rate of your heart, but the pacemaker, pacemaker, the pacemaker is receiving signals from your brain, and then also from hormones that can increase or decrease its rate. 
you basically have two sets of nerve fibers separated into the sympathetic system versus the parasympathetic system. So if you remember the sim versus the parent kind of uh, mnemonic, if that's a mnemonic to help you remember this. So impulses carried by the sympathetic nerve fibers will actually cause your heart rate to increase and prepare for fight or flight, moving more blood and oxygen around your body so you can do more cellular respiration to instantly run away or to fight for your life. And then impulses carried by the parasympathetic nerves fibers will actually help you to calm down and cause your heart rate to actually decrease. So that's a summary of three of the aspects that are controlled by the autonomic slash automatic nervous system as part of the peripheral nervous system. And remember to associate this back to the medulla oblongata located in the brainstem. So make sure you can find that on a diagram of the brain.